Hello everybody. Hope you're all doing good. Sylvester's out here of course and now I have Marmalade is also another visitor. <laughs> so this week was kind of busy. Every week I, you probably hear me say, oh I've been so busy. I truly am. Um, but this week I was busy because I was trying to go back and forth and get my target test uh, tested out to the best of my ability. And I can't say conclusively that it did or didn't work because Hurley decided to take matters into his own hands and he bred Lexi on his own. It's never been Hurley in that situation. It's always been Lexi not wanting to uh, submit. So she did this time. Why? We don't know. But she decided. So they have bred several times. Um, so I was going over and checking. I did do uh, one last test after they bred not completely after but after the first breeding because I was just curious to see um, if it's on target with Hurley and you could I could honestly say that yes for what it says to breed within the next three to six days which he did and we all know semen lives in a female target test works but I will try it out again next time what I mostly wanted it for is Mr. Diesel he's our young stud He's more than equipped to get the job done, but he doesn't know timing. So as soon as the girl's in heat, he's ready for action. Versus a seasoned stud will smell. If she's not ready, he'll go back and smell. And that's what a normal seasoned stud does. So Farley's like that, Hurley's like that. Impeccable on timing. He's, a, he's so well-natured. Everybody loves his puppies that have them. So I was doing that. So I spent some time with Lexi and Hurley and Callie, which I always enjoy seeing them, and uh, Miss Georgia. So I got, I didn't really, so that's basically what I was doing. And then I did things, um, I also was busy this week. Um, as you know, I have a garden. I know some people like to hear about my garden, some people don't, but this is my channel and this is what I wanna talk about. So, um, I had a great year for tomatoes and I actually attempted canning this year and I had nine quarts of tomatoes from just one batch of my garden. Um, I've always wanted to do that but uh, I guess being a working mom full time with three kids I never had time for a garden or anything so I feel like now I'm in my 40s I feel like I actually have time to try to do some of the things that I never had time to do before so I froze a lot of peppers this year, I blanch green beans this year, and I just canned tomatoes. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and thank God for YouTube videos and kind of gave me pointers. Uh, canning tomatoes brings back a lot of memories of when I was with my grandmother. Um, I just loved her. There goes the cat. Um, so we did canning when I was little, but of course, you know, when you're little, you don't pay attention to anything. And my grandmother's no longer around anymore. So when I was canning, I was just thinking of her. A lot of gardening, I always think, oh, my grandmother would be so proud because my grandmother was the gardener and I think that's where I get it from. So I did canning and we also raised our own Cornish Cross here and we had um, processed our chickens. We had 19 very big chickens and um, we put them in our freezer. We give some to our kids that want some. Um, <clears throat> I got marmalade here and Sylvester. Marmalade loves rubbing the camera and Sylvester of course has to be on my lap. But uh, So we did process our chickens. I feel like I'm starting to get some things accomplished and done that I wanted to get done. Um, I still am pulling stuff out of my garden. Uh, more tomatoes. I feel like I'll probably have more batches of tomatoes um, this year also. Uh, marmalade goes for her spay next week um, so and we did decide to keep her kitten uh, marmalade's been a beautiful addition to our family um, and today oops, cats today was the first day too that I got geese in the spring and I got my first goose egg so I will post a picture or I have posted a picture, I'm not sure if I'll put this in the end of the video or the beginning of the video, but I got a goose egg. Um, so we do, um, so we have confirmed to, I did, I was holding off, uh, last week I did mention about Miss Eva and I wasn't sure if I built to confirm her litter um, because sometimes 
Um, I bred her twice. I bred her like, um, so how it works is basically there's only a certain window of opportunity to breed your female, um, your, your girl. So we start every day. So the first day you actually see menstrual blood is day one. That's how we clock it here. So we start with day one. We know that um, from the past and from experience, our Danes don't aren't they don't ovulate until later on in their cycle so that's why Lexi when she had her first litter two years ago she got bred on day 18 well we didn't realize that was her first heat we didn't realize none of ours normally breed that late so that's how we ended up with three litters that year we planned on Lexi being one of them and then she didn't take so we ended up breeding another girl and then we found them in the backyard locked um, so we thought she was done, put her out with her friend Hurley, and they decided to have some babies. So um, with Eva, I bred her on day like 10, and then I went back to visit Hurley because Hurley doesn't live with me. He lives with his mom, Michaela, my daughter, um, and we bred on day 14. So I have an ultrasound, as some of you may know. So I started checking, so I clock it. I normally can pick up puppies on week three. Sometimes it's week four because um, semen lives in the female for so many days, you could be a week lagging there. Um, so I didn't see anything from her if we went by her day 10 breeding, but I did check her and she is pregnant. So um, I really had to zoom as much as my ultrasound would go but I saw her little sacks I'll post pictures and try to map out so you know what you're looking for I will do an ultrasound and a few more days so they really pop and people say oh that's what it is because um I fished around and I did see sacks so you have to be careful too because um sometimes you'll um miss you'll see a colon uh or you'll see a kidney those all look round too so by doing ultrasounds for a while I've distinguished between a kidney what a kidney looks like a bladder is pretty easy and then the colon track um, the GI track so um, sometimes the GI track could have gas air bubbles in it and it will also look like puppies but what you want to look for is a sack with something inside and the thing inside shouldn't be as white as the sack it should be smaller so I did zoom, zoom, zoom in and did see puppies on Eva. So we are confirming her pregnancy. Um, this is Eva's last litter. Uh, I love Eva to death. She's so beautiful. She has such a great personality. And I am going to be looking for a co-owner for one of her sons because uh, I've always wanted one of her Brindle Merrills and I would love to keep one of her sons. So um, if someone is in our area, and maybe on our waiting list. That's what I'm going to be uh, looking for as a co-owner for one of her boys. And this will be our first co-owner, um, not within ourselves. Like um, Kayla and I co-own Hurley. He lives with his mom, but um, I'm co-owner, which I doesn't really matter because her and I, we if she wanted to use one of my studs, it's not a big deal. And we do we we you know we have an open sharing policy and you know she's just as much vested in this as I am and she loves cares about all of our dogs my dogs as well as hers um, so I mean if you think about it she grew up with Frankie Fiona Ellie Eva um, the newer ones that I got she she's been a part of their life but she grew up with Frankie I think that's why it hit us all so hard um, we did get our big guys ashes back so um, I'm happy to bring them home but uh, so we have confirmed Eva Lexi I believe is done breeding so we will give it about three good three weeks maybe four weeks and we'll I'm pretty sure she's gonna be pregnant they locked a few times with over the week and then now Hurley is He's a seasoned stud, so now he knows, hey, she's not prime anymore. I call it prime. So basically, if you do pedestrian testing, um, when they get to a five is when they actually ovulate. So a uh, male could, I don't know how they do it, but they can, they know when to breed a seasoned uh, male. 
So you could breed her the day before and if she ovulates, you're good to go. Or, you know, right after she ovulates because she'll ovulate and then it, the, the eggs ripen and then they're good to go. But because a male sperm can sit and um, be live in a female for so long, five to seven days depending on the quality of the semen um, that's why you know people normally don't breed day after day after day they can skip a day here and there and they'll still um, be covered for when the female ovulates so we will check uh, Lexi Lou and uh, about three to four weeks and Lexi was so great to let me do my target testing on her because it is drawing blood and that's something uh, relatively new for us but um, you know between the two of us we managed just fine um, that's part of breeding um, you know we were going to AI if we needed to but we didn't need to uh, with Mr. Hurley on on duty so I guess we'll have to wait till our next female to try out our testing again to get a um, solid opinion about it so so that's what's been going on here just basically getting my canning done my um, birds processed and I do have um, when I say I'm busy I do have other things that I do um, you guys all know I dabble in real estate a little bit and I have um, you know I got marmalade through a bad situation with one of our properties so I've been working on that too so I really don't have a lot of time to devote to like projects around here because I'm trying to get one project squared away but um, it, we should have uh, Eva should have Halloween puppies um, so another thing I might want to talk about is our waiting list we do have a waiting list and some of those people have been bumped from list to list and we have the best people on our waiting list I really love chatting with them and I get to know them before they actually come and pick up a puppy so when I see him, oh, there's Isabel on the road. So when I see him, it's just like a face with a name that I've uh, faced with the conversations I've already had with these people. But um, so Eva's puppies will be born in October. Lexi's will be probably in November. So if somebody, we know we have specific people for Lexi. Um, other people that, um, you know, they might, they'll probably have the opportunity by the time, um, Eva's is born, we'll know if Lexi's uh, confirmed, which I would stake, yeah, she is. Um, they can say, oh, well, we'll wait for them. Because Eva has really cool colors, but Lexi has like a rainbow. And they all get that from Hurley, our, our study boy. Um, so Hurley's the guy that's a rainbow. Whatever you pair him with, he's going to kick off the best genes. With Callie, they have chocolates. They had lilacs. With Eva, they have Brindle Merrills and uh, mantles. With Callie, um, yeah, Callie was the lilacs. But with Lexi, they had Merrills, Fawn Merrills, Harlequins, Fawniquins. So uh, it should be a very colorful two litters. And, um, you know, and hopefully by testing, when Maggie comes around, uh, we'll be able to actually get it this time and I'm not sure like I said before who I'd even uh, breed her with yet but that's the update for this week and uh, I'll try to get better about getting them out on Sundays because I know people have more time to enjoy their YouTube videos and I really do appreciate you guys tuning in to watch us and I love um, the feedback I get a lot of people that contact me for my opinion on things and I I really uh, you know I'm really happy when that happens because I mean I can only give you my opinion and tell you like hey this is what I would do but it's nice it's a nice conversation um, we have such a great following of people we had so many people uh, reach out to us when we lost our Frank because everybody that's followed us knows he's a huge part he was a huge part of this family and he still will be his memory so I just want to say thank you for everybody that reached out and was thoughtful and kept us in our thoughts. So that really means a lot to us because I feel the same way. If I know somebody or if one of our Danes, I mean, we have some older ones now that have that puppies and, um, you know, have lost them. And I always feel devastated when I hear uh, we lost one of our, you know, either Frank or Fiona's litter or Ellie's litter, but we have some of our puppies have uh you know with giant breeds you just never know but so i always feel i always feel for them too so it's a great community 
Um, so thanks for watching.